Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Professor Williams here, along with my good friend P. Hat, the sampling distribution of the sample proportion. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to let Excel do a lot of your calculations for you in order to solve one of these questions. All right, so we have a problem that I've worked actually in another video by hand. What it tells us is according to a study by a national research firm, 21% of Americans are close to their credit limit on one or more of their credit cards. So I take a random sample of 600, and I want to know what's the probability that more than 150 of those sampled will be close to their credit limit on one or more of their credit cards. So in order to proceed in Excel, what we need is we're going to use P to represent the mean or the center of our distribution. So that's 0.21. We're going to have to know um, what our value of X is. And in a sample proportion question, we let P hat stand in for X. So P hat is calculated by finding of 150 of those who were sampled is 600. Remember, P hat is simply those that I want divided by what I have, i.e. sample size, and that gives me 0.25. The other thing that many that many tab that Excel is going to want is it's going to want a standard deviation. So I've got to calculate the standard deviation of P hat. And I do that by taking the square root of P times Q. Remember, Q is simply 1 minus P divided by 600, which is my sample size. So when I find um, 0.21 times 0.79, I then divide it by 600, and then, only then do I take the square root, I find that the standard deviation or the standard error of the proportion is 0 0.0166. So these are the three pieces of information that I need for Excel, and I also need to remember I'm looking for the probability of more than this 150. So just to give you a real quick visual, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for this area under the curve, right, because I wanted the probability of more than 150, and that P hat represents my 150 out of my 600. My proportion, population proportion sits at the center of the distribution. And so when I go into Excel, what I have to keep in mind is that I'm solving for this area up here in the top of the curve. Let's go get some Excel action on. So here I am in Excel, and I think this is Excel 2018. And so what I need to do is I want to come here to this little f of x, right, which is going to be my function. And I'm going to double click on that. And it's going to give me a search for a function. And so it's going to say, well, give me a description of what you want to do. And so in this case, I'm going to start typing, I'm going to type in normal. And I'm going to say go. And what I want is right here. I want normal distribution. Remember, by applying the central limit theorem to this sample proportion, it allows me to use normal distribution. So I'm going to highlight norm.dist, and I'm going to hit OK. And it's going to give me my dialog box. So remember I said that I was going to let p hat substitute for x. p hat was 0.25. I said that I was going to let my population proportion stand in for the mean, which is 0.21. And I said that I was going to let the standard error of the proportion right, represent the standard deviation. And we calculated that to be 0 0.0166. And now the last thing it wants me to know 
wants to know is, do I want this to be cumulative? And I want everything, right? I want it, I want the whole area under the curve. So my answer here is going to be true. So what you'll see is it'll give you the formula result here and up here, but I'm going to hit OK because that's going to give it to me in a cell in Excel. So what Excel has just given me is it has given me this area under the curve. That's the area that Excel always solves for. And so I know that that area is 0.992. O one six. Other thing that I know is that this area under the curve plus this area under the curve is equal to one. So in order to isolate this area here, I'm going to have to take and subtract. I'm going to have to do one minus the point nine nine two o one six which is why I let Excel put that answer into a cell for me. Because now I'm going to be even lazier. And down here, I'm going to type in equals one minus, and I'm going to highlight that box, and I'm going to hit enter, and there is my answer. So if you looked at this, this is actually the probability that P hat is less than 0.25. This is the probability that P hat is greater than, whoops, missing my end, than 0.25. And you will recall that from our diagram, we wanted the probability that P hat is greater than 0.25. And so here's your answer right here. So when I did that little bit of math over there in Excel, what it gave me when I subtracted from 1, it gave me this probability here as 0 0.007984, which I could round off, or I could simply move my decimal place two places and say that the probability that my sample proportion is greater than 25% is 0.7984%. What using Excel did for you was it removed the burden of actually calculating a z-score and then looking that z-score up in the formula in a normal distribution table. So I hope this was helpful. Look for more examples and more videos on my YouTube channel. And until then, I hope you have a great day.